<laughs> We're gonna go find the peepers. We can hear them singing from the porch. Let's go find the tiny frogs. Peep, peep. So we're driving the back roads here of our tiny town. Um, you can see there are some apple trees out there. We live right on the edge of an apple farm. How lucky are we? Orchard. Like, seriously. Okay, okay. It's an orchard. <laughs> hey Bill. Yeah? Tell me a story about tiny frogs. <laughs> Peepers. I love peepers. My favoriteest thing in the whole world. Oh. And we're gonna pull over right here. Okay. And turn this around. Oh my gosh, they're so loud. Yeah. Tell me a frog story, husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, uh, I love the spring peepers. They make me very, very happy. Um, they sound like they should be on spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> they do! It's like, it's totally a Star Trek noise. Oh, I, I just, I love how they sing. Mm. I love how they sing. I've never met a spaceship I don't like. That, <laughs> this is true. This is true. That that cacophony of joy. So yeah, I I hate winter. Oh, I know. Um, I hate the cold. Mm -hmm. I hate the dark. I bought you a heated jacket. You bought me a heated jacket, which has <laughs> been a godsend. I don't like. There's nothing living outside. Everything's just barren. Sleeping. Uh, oh, I mean the bears. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Rawr. definitely sleeping. I mean, you can take sleeping, but it, I mean, it's just so heavy, mm. gloomy. Yeah. Um. And it's hard for me. Like every every the start of every winter, I I think I'm not going to make it through the winter. Mm. You know, it yeah. just it feels so final. Um, and I don't, I don't really look forward to, oh, today's the first official day of spring, you know. I have shoveled way too much after the first official day of spring to ever believe that that's the first day of spring. True story. Yeah. Um, but there are two things that are, that are sure fire for me. Um, the first is when you're out late winter, early spring on an evening and you can feel that bit of warmth and dampness in the air. Yeah. And you, 
you smell and you can smell, you know, mo moist dirt and green things getting ready to grow. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that, that cleanness in the air. And then there are the peepers. <laughs> Every year, like, I wait. I wait for the peepers. And when I hear them, it's like, okay. You know, it can snow again. It can get cold again. And it will probably do both. But that's okay. Because spring is actually here. Because mm. once the peepers come, they're here. Yeah. And it's... It's an audio reminder that I lived. That I made it through. We got through the darkness again. And... You know, they sing, they celebrate. You know. They're partying because they want to get some they action. They do. <laughs> um, and more power to them. But it's also just a, you know, you're alive. And I'm sure they're the same way. Like, mm. we've been mucked in the frozen mud all winter. And now we're here. They were sleeping. You know, of course you'd want to celebrate. Of course you'd want to sing. Yeah. You made it through. <laughs> and, you know, may heaven be filled with the sound of peepers. It's a lot of frog. It's really not. They're only about this big. I know, but there's so many. Like, how many? It is, here, it is loud. Thousands, tens of thousands of frogs. Yeah, that's not like six frogs. That's that's six digits worth of frogs. Yeah. But is maybe it, five. Isn't it awesome? It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It that's smells a, like summer camp. That's the sound of celebration. So you are gathering sound, yeah. right? So tell me what's what's that about? Who are you gathering sound for? So my my sister from another mister, Karen G, down in Georgia, sent me a whole batch of peeper recordings because they came out earlier down there because it's warmer. It's Georgia, yeah. And she knows. She is, she is magical. She is magical. She, she understands. Yeah. Um. Karen is big poet magic. For days was sending me recordings of peepers because I hadn't heard it yet. Um. And now they're in full force. You know, they're, they're singing their, their, their medley here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go home and uh, return the favor. She sent me love from, from Georgia. I'm going to send her some love from Massachusetts. That's cool. I don't know how to express well enough, or elegantly enough, I suppose, how grateful I am for our crop of friends. Because they're, they're not really, they're not just friends you no. know their family no i think you reach a point in your life where you really gather close the handful of people who are who are bonded yeah you know who you're bonded to and they're bonded to you and you know you build that family right you know and it is family i mean and that's, I mean, that's really important, you know. And I think everybody, everybody does that to a certain extent. We find our, you know, you know, that family you make is so important into who you are later in life. 
Yeah. Family, family and friends. I'm just, I, every day I'm just so grateful. Big sloppy. I love you. Kind of. It, it's a family rather than just pals, you know? And I mean, it's, it's what it should be, you know? I know this is going to sound all Marxist and stuff, um, because it is. <laughs> but we have been conditioned in a capitalist society to think that our worth is just only paired with work and it's only paired with those roles and it it's just so freaking twisted um but being able to be and be worthy enough to be loved in someone's company just for your company that's huge it's fast yeah Inti intimacy is an inadequate word because it's more than that. Yeah. Let's go do some crimes. Good crimes? Get sushi and not pay. Hot. We'd be in so much trouble. Sushi chefs have really big knives. Yeah. And I bet some of those guys can vault a counter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs>